So could you tell us your reasoning behind this? Why do you want to legalise marijuana? Oh, well, quite simply, the war on drugs is really a war on people. We need to get real about cannabis use in Australia. Nearly 7 million Australians have used cannabis. Right now, that's a choice that could land them with a criminal conviction that could impact on their opportunities to get a job. Uh, it's a choice that exposes them to more harmful substances. And of course, the people who benefit are criminal syndicates, criminal gangs. I mean, the profits in this industry are huge. We need to take it out of the hands of criminals and put it within a tightly regulated health framework. Richard Natale, you talk about the war on drugs, but there are concerns from medical authorities that by legalising marijuana, it could essentially become a gateway drug to other much more serious drugs like ice. Oh, well, the idea that somehow cannabis is a gateway into other drugs has been disproven time and time again. What, of course, is dangerous is when individuals who ch seek to make a choice to use cannabis end up uh, going through a criminal network and it's that criminal network that will look to seek to increase its profits and drive consumption to harmful and riskier products. What we need to do is take it out of the hands of criminals. We need to put it in the hands of trained professionals and what the Greens are proposing is a model that does exactly that, where individuals are able to purchase cannabis through a licensed outlet. Uh, that would be a trained professional providing accurate health information uh, basically the product would be sold in a plain packaged um, environment and people would get access to a product of known quality and purity, a lower risk product than is uh, often available within the black market. And what it does mean is that uh, if there are vulnerable people, that those trained professionals can ensure that they get the help that they need. One of the things that you're proposing is, of course, this is going to be legal for anyone over the age of 18 and that people are going to be able to grow up to six plants in their home. How do you plan on paying for all of this policing around this uh, policy? Oh, well, firstly, the policing that goes into uh, the uh, black uh, market for cannabis is extraordinary. The money that's wasted in prosecuting uh, individuals who consume cannabis, 75,000 people uh, with a criminal conviction for the use of cannabis, clogging up the court system, diverting police resources, money would be saved in that area. <clears throat> and of course there'd be revenue gain because this would be taxed with an excise uh, similar to tobacco. This would be a revenue raising proposal, not one that would cost money. In fact, uh, we expect it would raise billions of dollars. Uh, and that's money that would be invested in treatment, in drug education, in rehabilitation services, all of the things at the moment that are chronically underfunded. When you talk about revenue raising, there is an argument there, like you said, in terms of the taxes that could, um, that could help raise revenue. But there's also the argument that the additional money will go into the criminal justice system, into the healthcare system, in, if this was to be legalised. But I just want to get to some of the points that are being raised today by the AMA. They've tweeted saying that there are serious adverse physical and mental health impacts that cannot be ignored. They're calling this irresponsible. Why would you encourage people to, why would you encourage people to take a drug and legalise a drug that could potentially be harmful to health and that medical experts are saying don't do it? Well right now 7 million Australians have already made that choice despite the fact that the government has prosecuted a tough on drugs agenda they're already making that choice so the question for government is do we want to ensure that this is a safer choice? I worked as a drug and alcohol doctor and I've seen the damage that the tough on drugs approach does. It drives this underground, it prevents people from seeking treatment and of course there are many other health professionals who support this. There are many doctors, many health professionals who understand that the evidence base is very clear on this. Ensuring that individuals get accurate information, taking it out of the hands of criminal syndicates, putting it in the hands of trained professionals and ensuring that we have uh, drugs of known quality and purity, lower risk products, making sure that individuals have got accurate information. The reality is that right now there are many millions of Australians who have decided to make this choice. The question for us is, are we going to make this a safer choice or are we going to continue to have them exposed to serious harm? Richard Dutale, it's a very bold policy, but neither party is going to support it. So what's your next step? How do you plan on getting this legalised? Uh, well, I don't accept that neither party will support it. You only need to look at what's happening internationally in places like Uruguay, in Canada. Uh, which is about to legalise uh, cannabis for adult use, many states in the US. And of course, the Labor Party in New Zealand will be taking this to a referendum shortly. So it's up to uh, Bill Shorten or indeed 
Malcolm Turnbull, to show a bit of courage here, to stand with the majority of Australians, the overwhelming majority of Australians support uh, legalisation of adult use cannabis. They know it's a safer, more sensible model for the regulation of cannabis use. And so I I'm not convinced that uh, one of the major parties won't recognise that there's an opportunity here to have a more evidence-based approach and to stand with the majority of the Australian community.